Welcome back. It's great to uh, have you on mission with another Child Foundation. Glenn has been really helping us to focus our lives on missions through the abiding cycle. But you may be seeing now that God is doing a whole lot of changing, not only in the people that you are ministering to, but in your own life. That change is that God-exclusive experience that you are experiencing even while on the field. Thanks, John. I hope you guys are really enjoying uh, these devotionals and the Abiding Cycle book as you're learning this concept of abiding uh, from the parable of Jesus in John. And I hope that you're beginning to process what that means for your life, that, that in order to be a person who's living a mission-focused life, that it's more than an event, that this is a lifestyle, and that you take this with you wherever you go. That's what God created us for, was to know Him and really to reveal Him to other people. In Colossians, uh, Paul was writing to this church, and he says in the context of that letter that he was praying for the church in a very specific way. And, and he uses this idea of the abiding cycle in his prayer to God for this church. I want to read that and make some points today to reveal a little bit stronger this mystery of what it means to have God producing fruit through our lives and revealing himself through our lives. Paul said this, it's in Colossians chapter 1, beginning of verse 9. He says, For this reason, since the day that we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to, number one, reveal his will. Listen to how he says it to fill you with the knowledge of His will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Number two, He's praying for them to obey. He says, and we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please Him in every way. And then number three, He's talking about the third part of the cycle, which is God-exclusive activity. He says, bearing fruit in every good work. And then number four, he says that he wants them to know God by experience through obedience, to have that deep, intimate knowledge of God. He says, uh, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. So Paul is praying for what we're trying to do as believers who are living a mission-focused life. He's praying for this church that they would abide in Christ and allow this cycle to infiltrate their life in such a way that they would know God and be changed by that. It's, it's, it seems to be such a mystery, and Paul identifies with the mystery. Matter of fact, later on in chapter 1, in verse uh, twenty. Uh, seven, he says, to them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. This is the mystery that God was trying to reveal to us. It's Christ in us is the hope of glory, the hope of us seeing his glory and the hope of the world seeing his glory. Is Christ in us, making his way out. Let me illustrate that mystery for you. I was preaching a sermon on that text one time, and I chose to use a, a garden hose. I took the garden hose and I connected it to a faucet and gave the illustration that being connected, that, that we are the hose as, as uh, humans. All we are is the hose. And I connected the hose to a faucet and describe that as salvation. It's us connecting to the source of life, of eternal life, and that's God. So Jesus connects us with the Father. That's us being connected to the, to the water faucet. And then uh, I siphoned some dirty water into the hose so that there would be dirty water that would come out when I turned the faucet on. And, and uh, the reason I did that is because you know, the water that comes out of the faucet represents God's Spirit in us. It's, 
It's the glory of God ready to reveal himself. But the first way that he reveals his glory is in an unexpected way. And that is dirty water starts to come out. All the old part of us that was in the hose prior to our connecting to Christ, to our salvation, all of that stuff becomes to come out, begins to come out and be replaced by the pure character of God, and the spirit of God from one degree of glory to another, right? And abiding in Christ expedites that process. It speeds it up. It allows us to see the glory of God revealed more quickly as we get to see God for who he is. And I also had a, a, a nozzle on the end of the hose to illustrate the fact that we can control how quickly that happens. If we open it up full and just let the water flow, then that, that nasty water came out quickly and the good water began to present itself. And the same thing's true in our lives. When we join God by putting off the things of the world and putting on the things of God, that is being obedient to the moment by moment promptings of the Spirit, to the things that God tells us to do every day in every situation as we obey Him, then we get to see His life manifested through us. It's a great mystery, but it's also pretty simple to understand. I hope that you're beginning to understand that mystery. I hope that you're beginning to see examples in your life as you are dedicating yourself to more obedience and more pursuit of God. I hope that you're getting beyond just a mental agreement that it needs to be done. I hope you're starting to practice these things. And, and now that you're on the mission trip and experiencing uh, God on this trip, I hope that you're having encounters with him right now. So the assignment for today is to take your journal and pay attention to what God is doing in your life today. What promptings are you feeling from the Holy Spirit to obey? And, and what are you doing with that? Are you obeying him? Take the chance. Take the risk. This is a good place to do it. Take the risk while you're on this mission trip and obey God and watch to see what God does. What kind of God exclusive activity happens that was unexpected for you. How does God reveal himself? This is a good opportunity for you to experience this, to experiment with it, and hopefully when you get home, to continue it. That's your assignment for the day. God bless your pursuit.